okay? Just to get that nice burn. I let, on the stair, you're gonna get a little bit more stretch if you've got control. I do recommend on a two by four, so you can, if you don't have good control in the bottom position, you can touch the heels and go. But as you get stronger and you get more mobility, then you can take this to a higher step where uh, you can just let the, uh, the heels drop and hang and then push out of that, okay? You've created some strength and some length on the backside here, but we have to look at the muscles on the front that co-contract and stabilize the ankle. So you're kind of your, all your dorsiflexors there. Simple, band. All right, you can use a mini band. I love using a mini band, but it's gonna show you with the long loop band right now. Very simple. Anybody who's sprained an ankle has probably done these. Okay, so it's all the way down, all the way back up. And again, if I'm using that tip anterior, I'm also creating stretch on this side. Okay, you can go in and out. <clears throat> Angle your body a little bit. Okay, so I'm going into inversion, eversion. Anybody who's sprained an ankle, this is typically the, mo the movement that we sprain the ankle. So we wanna turn it in and out. Go after more tip posterior. I'm gonna spin my body this way. So now the band is pulling me out like this and I can do some eversion, or sorry, inversion. Okay, so going in. And then you can also use, you can also do plantar flexion if going up on your toes is too weak, you can also use a band to add some resistance to that. <clears throat> now, I like to do what I call kinetic linking. Looking at a squat pattern and a lunge, I need to both flex the hip and flex the ankle. So, to add in ankle work with my hip work, I can do some dorsiflexion here, add some hip flexion extension on this side and I can do some dorsiflexion here. So if I've got tight calves in the bottom of a squat, this is a really nice position to work on a squat pattern because it might not be a tight hip, it might not be a tight quad, it might be an unstable ankle that's just stopping you from going into the squat position and we're just assuming that we have tight calves. <clears throat> the dorsiflexors of the ankle just might not be working with the hip flexors of the hip because they work together like this, okay? So looking at how things kinetically link is really important if you're feeling limited in a squat or a lunge or something feels jammed up. That, you know, what I was talking to you about how integrated the foot is with the hip, if the, the foot is not happy, that sensation is gonna come up into the hip joint and it might create some tightness up in there, but it just might be some either weakness down there or they're just not communicating very well. <clears throat> or it might not be stabilizing at the spine properly and you're just jacking up a hip that's winding up an ankle. I don't know. But getting a full assessment and figuring out what's communicating what isn't is where you need to, to, to take things. There are other little devices you can use. Um, this is my Roll Recovery R3. It's a foot roller. I'll also use it on my calf. The, um, uh, the peanuts. So you can get peanuts, or you can make two, you can make one of your own, tape it all up together, and uh, make kind of this double lacrosse ball type of apparatus. Works, which works really nicely because it goes on either side of the Achilles. It can work, you know, the two heads of the gastroc. So that's another nice way of uh, kind of releasing the calves and working on the feet. But this roll recovery little device, you can see it's got kind of a little arch support, and you can work into the foot. Again, you don't need something this fancy. A lacrosse ball will work just fine or go into a little bit more of an acuball that's got a little bit of a spike to it. You can get some acupressure done. All right, now, where was I? Okay, so we went over some single leg balance. Now, so if anyone's wondering where a lot of this stuff is coming from, I'm actually, this is part of my SPS um, level one workshop that I teach for physiotherapists, kinesiologists, athletic therapists, chiropractors. It's, um, it's a high performance rehab course that looks at movement integration and uh, advanced uh, exercise prescription. 
So my next workshop that I'm doing is in October, October 20th in London. And it's gonna be, we have the, the location that we're still trying to figure out, but you can start to learn how to integrate and kinetically link using loads, how to rehab a hip or rehab a knee by reconnecting the foot, reconnecting the ankle, the hip, core, and even the shoulders can play an integral part because of the sling system. So it's a, it's a holistic approach uh, looking at how the body moves to treat one individual uh, injured area. So another couple few things that you can check before I let you go. Toe walking, heel walking, squats, heels up, heels down. So I'll quickly go through these. We already did the knee to wall, single leg balance, and the active toe lifts, but when we're looking at whole movement patterns, so I'll get people to quickly stand up on their toes as high as they can and walk forward. And if I see a little dip in the one ankle, that might give me an indication that uh, some of the plantar flexors or ankle stabilizers might be a little bit weak on that side. Heel walking, same thing. Can they control the hips and maintain a good you know, 30 to 40 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion without really struggling? So it, it's just looking at a bit of a gait pattern. And then of course, squatting. Can they squat feet straight ahead? And again, I'm not telling people to train this way, but I wanna see by locking them up and putting them into restrictions, are they spinning out, okay? If they're spinning out, they might have some tibial rotation or some knee instability, so I might need to go after that. What's their posture like? You know, can they maintain a nice tall upright spine? Are they having knee pain anywhere? And then get them to come up on the toes, almost like a catcher squat. Can they maintain that high foot position without jamming up their knees? So again, we're assessing and addressing any kind of uh, problems that might be through the kinetic chain. Coming back to, okay, so, Dowel, right? We went over some soft tissue. Ow, pinchy ankle in the front. This is where I'm going to take my band and mobilize said ankle joint. So I'm gonna take a band and it depends on, when I do this on people, I'll glide or rotate the tib fib, the, the two lower leg bones here and get them to lunge into it, and I'll see where it feels better. Most of the time when I internally rotate, when I turn them this way, the ankle clears out of the, out of the way. Sometimes if I put a posterior glide on or an anterior glide, that clears out. I'm looking for the best response for the individual. So, if I found that gliding the ankle bone back worked the best, I'm gonna put a band below these two ankle bones, and I'm going to lunge. I'm going to use my dowel, put it on my pinky toe, and I'm going to lunge to the outside of the dowel. Now, the ankle joint runs almost on a 30 degrees angle this way, so if I lunge straight towards my big toe, I'm going to jam up the joint. So I need to lunge towards the pinky toe. So putting a stick or a dowel on that outside will help give you a guide rod in the direction which you need to mobilize. So 20, 30 reps, and then recheck. If I glide the two lower leg bones, the tip fib back and it cleared it out, I might need to pull the band above the malleoli, so these two outside ankle bones, and do my lunges this way. If I pull it forward and it feels better, I might need to do it this way. So I'm creating an anterior glide relative to the talus, so I'm creating, I'm telling the ankle bone to go backwards by gliding the two lower leg bones forward. So this is a really nice uh, way to mobilize the ankle joint. And you can play with rotations. Again, everyone's a little bit different. You just need to feel and see what works best. And if you're doing it on yourself, just experiment. And you're like, oh, that's jammed up. And then just apply something. And if it feels better, that's probably where you Then adding some dynamic leg swings, okay? This is just adding a more greater component to the ankle to control inversion, eversion. Leg swings front and back. It's gonna help you dissociate the hips, teaching the foot and the, and the hip to connect together and control torque up above. <clears throat> so, doing some figure eights. 
allowing twisting or controlling rotation and torque down below. So these are all progressions to the static leg balance. You can do, sit here and do some juggling if you want. Get the eyes, the visual system, vestibular system to start working a little bit just to link up the brain to the foot. Because if we're playing sport, we shouldn't have to worry about the old ankle injury. We shouldn't have to worry about what the foot is doing in space. It should just automatically land where it's supposed to be. And our brain and our body is doing a bunch of other things. So we don't have to think about, is my foot working? It should just happen. So integrating a lot of those things will help. Lastly, just going through my notes here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then of course, adding loads. Um, you know, kettlebells, um, single leg work, single leg deadlifts, anything in the single leg, adding some jumping with control, but you have to teach proper uh, compression and landing techniques for the foot and to land softly. Walking, we'll use balance beams a lot to teach the feet to lock up and dissociate the hips, get people to carry loads, but that's where you're gonna functionally get things once the pieces are working, then you have to start adding loads and adding the patterns. So make sure the pieces work, make sure the individual muscles are waking up before you start to integrate them with the kinetic chain. If you add loads too soon, the foundation will start to fall and you're not gonna get anywhere. If you are just purely looking at isolation and strengthening the ankle inverters, everters, um, the plantar flexors without teaching it how to work with the rest of the kinetic chain, that's not going to work either. So you have to make sure you at least self-evaluate uh, effectively, find out where your weak links are, wake up those weak links, make sure your brain can find where those muscles are, and then start integrating with patterns and then patterns with loads, and then make it more ballistic as you move along. So that's really a lot of the, uh, the meat and potatoes that I teach for the SPS level one. There are some other more specific things where we get into different kinetic chains, um, abduction with ankle, eversion, adduction with ankle, inversion, uh, and looking at those kinetic links. But for the most part, if you've got some plantar fasciitis, some ankle or, uh, excuse me, Achilles tendonitis or tendinosis issues, uh, tight ankles in general where it's limiting your squat, a lot of the stuff that we went over can really help you out. If you're getting nerve or tingly issues, then get it assessed because that could be coming from your back. So don't assume, well, I've got some numbness in my toes, so it must be in the calf. Hmm, maybe, could be the back of the knee, could be up in the sciatic area, could be lower back. But um, again, anything neuro, tingly, get that assessed by a you know a certified orthopedic specialist. All right, welcome, Sam. And yeah, if anybody has any questions, <clears throat> Uh, you can also go onto my YouTube. I put up a few things. The I call it the tight calf conundrum. Uh, the some uh, hand wrist stuff is up there. You can go to my website. Uh, you can if you caught the shoulder course. The um, I think the code is still valid to the end of the month. The uh, the code is SWA two thousand eighteen all caps for twenty five percent off the uh, shoulder health and muscle up course. So if you're interested in that stuff. Uh, I, I continue to put more just to get it out to people uh, who need uh, who need help with whatever issues that they have. If you can't come and see me, uh, if you can come and see me, great. Come hang out. I'll fix you up, and uh, yeah, we'll get you optimizing your performance. So if anybody has any questions, I'm just gonna scroll back here. Hey Amber, Joe, how's it going? No questions. Lots of waves. Cool. All right. So you're welcome, Jack. Um, Wednesday. Wednesday, the Wellness Wednesday. And from last week's talk regarding uh, mitochondria and brain fog, I talked a little bit about sleep. Some individuals who chimed in but didn't quite apply some of the brief not, uh, information. So I'm going to go the keys of what to avoid, uh, certain supplements, what to avoid. So I know a lot of my clients, especially my shift workers or my workaholics, they are really struggling to lose weight. They're you know brain fog. They're kind of walking around all zombied because they think they can burn candles at the bow 